Registrations are now open for our ACCA Performance Management exam course. Get access to our comprehensive playlist of over 46 hours of content, including concept videos covering the entire syllabus, exam videos explaining how those concepts are tested in the exam, and question videos to help you with exam practice. Subscribe to one of our packages, the smallest package. For $10, you get access to the entire course for 7 days. Or you can subscribe to one of our longer term packages. For more information, check out the links in the description below. And now, on to the video. So materials cost variances, as we've seen, can be split up into two variances. Materials price variance, which looks at the cost component, and materials usage variance, which looks at the quantity component. This is where we analyze if we use more materials or less materials than we should have. If we wasted too much, if we had to use excess material, all of that is analyzed through the materials usage variance, okay? So the way the materials usage variance works is that you'll have your standard cost card and you'll expect to use a certain amount of materials for each unit produced. So maybe you're producing a bottle of water and you expect to use 300 grams based on the standard cost card of plastic to make that bottle. If you use 310 grams, that's bad, that's an adverse variance. If you use 290 grams, that's good, that's a favorable variance, okay? In pure numerical terms. So the material usage variance is calculated where you take the standard usage in kg, whatever the raw material denomination is, be it kilograms, liters, meters, whatever it might be, right? Kg is just a stand-in over here. Minus the actual usage in kg, multiplied by the standard cost per kg, right? So we're effectively taking a kg amount in the brackets and multiplying it by a dollars per kg amount outside the brackets to get the final variance in terms of dollars. And as we know, all variances must be stated in terms of dollars, okay? So, again, kg is just a placeholder, it could be liters, it could be meters, whatever. Now, standard usage sometimes needs to be calculated because actual usage we'll be able to find based on how many kgs we bought and used in our process. Standard usage we might need to calculate based on how many units we actually produced into the standard kgs per unit, right? So we take our number of units, multiply the kgs over units to get the standard usage. And please remember it's actual units produced, not the budgeted units produced. We're looking for the standard amount, which is actual into standard, right? If we combine the two formulas above, we end up with this. Material usage variance is equal to the actual units produced into standard kgs per unit to give us standard usage minus the actual usage into the standard cost per kg. Let's try an example. Let's say that we have a standard cost of $2 per kg of plastic and a standard usage of 300 grams per bottle, right? Over the next week, the manufacturer buys 3,000 kg of plastic and uses it to produce 9,000 bottles. What is the materials usage variance? So materials usage variance, let's start by calculating the standard usage first, which is actual units produced into standard kgs per unit. Actual units, we ended up producing 9,000 bottles and we use the standard usage was 300 grams per bottle. So 9,000 into 0.3 will give us the standard usage of 2,700. Minus the actual usage in kgs, which was 3,000 kg in this case, right? So 3,000 into the standard cost per kilogram, which was $2. So we end up with this. And this will give us an adverse variance of 600, meaning we expected to use 2,700 kg to produce 9,000 bottles, we ended up using 3,000 kg, more than what was expected, that's a bad thing, so our variance was at worst. But again, as with all variances, we can't just say it's bad because the variance was at worst, or that it's good because the variance was favorable. We need to analyze why it was at worst or favorable before we can give the final conclusion. So the table below highlights some of the reasons why a material's usage variance could be favorable or at worst. So in this case, it's adverse in our example. What could be a reason for that? That happens when the actual usage is more than what our standard usage dictates. So one could be that there's constantly changing designs of the product and the staff needs to learn to make a new design. Now think about it. Every time you need to make a new shape of a bottle, a new design, obviously there'll be a learning process. And when you learn, you make mistakes. So there might be wastage, right? Likewise, it could be using lower quality materials, right? So if you use lower quality materials, sometimes you need to use more of them to produce the same amount of final product. So that could be a reason as well. Maybe it's because production was rushed. There was poor management. There were 
pushing the staff to work quickly and because they were working quickly they were making more mistakes leading to more wastage right or maybe the staff was poorly trained and didn't handle the materials well or maybe there was more quality controls leading to more inspection checking of the quality of the final product and products which failed this quality inspection would be rejected not counted towards our final uh, batch and that means they would be considered as waste and that would lead to adverse materials usage variance on the flip side favorable uh, reasons for favorable materials usage variance where we use less ingredients than was expected in our standard cost card could be maybe the design is made more efficient so that you need to use less materials so you'll see that some plastic bottle manufacturers they'll have a label on top marketing that we use 30 percent less plastic or 20 percent less plastic in our bottle and they're trying to show they're environmentally friendly but they're, what they're also doing is they're reducing the cost of the bottle by reducing the amount of plastics they use right or using higher quality materials might mean you need to use less to produce more products right or it could be good management leading to less wastage or the staff is very well trained and they don't waste the materials right all of these things but as we've seen some of these reasons for adverse variances aren't necessarily bad and some of these reasons for uh, favorable variances aren't necessarily good right so introduction of quality controls good quality controls means that the final product will have a higher quality because you'll be rejecting any defective finished goods so even if that results in a bit more wastage it's not necessarily a bad thing so even if it causes an adverse materials usage variance you can't say it's necessarily bad right so we need to always consider why the variance is favorable or adverse before we pass that final judgment. And one last thing to note about materials usage variance that it can be split further into materials mix variance and materials yield variance. So basically materials variances you have price and usage variance and the usage variance can be further split into mix and yield variances which we'll look at later on in separate videos.